Malaria is one of the most important infectious diseases in the world. There are over 300 million new cases each year. Over a million children die, primarily in Africa, each year of the disease. So in terms of public health importance, it's one of the major infectious diseases. Today, the situation is changing. There's a renewed effort to begin to eliminate and eventually eradicate the disease using the tools of genomic research to understand biology. Malaria is a protozoan parasite. So it's different than other infectious agents that you think about. The parasite has over 5,000 genes, whereas the average virus has 10 to 15 genes. So it's a much more complex organism. It has a life cycle both in the human host and in the mosquito vector. It invades both the human liver and the red cells. And when it's in the bloodstream, it grows from one parasite to 20 parasites, then those parasites burst out and reinvade more red cells. And so a person in an endemic area can have parasites in one out of 100 or one out of 10 of their red cells. It's very important in studying diseases of humans that you be able to study the disease in the natural setting, where the disease is epidemic or endemic. And that's, of course, a major reason for us collaborating with investigators in Africa. We have a very long collaboration with a clinic in Chess, which is near Dakar, Senegal. It's a malaria clinic, and so patients think they have disease, come to the clinic, and if the person's infected, we offer them the opportunity to join the study. And for that, they need to donate a small amount of blood for us to be able to extract the parasites. The collaboration began as a desire to understand drug resistance at the molecular level and at the public health level. Drug resistance is a very serious problem. Because of the selection pressure of treating humans with drugs, the parasite has evolved mechanisms to evade that drug treatment. This is why we're probably seeing some loss of sensitivity to artemisinin alone. By taking this drug alone, they're selecting parasites that are resistant to this drug, but now the drugs are combined into a single tablet. So we're hoping doing the combination will ward off resistance. The Senegalese were very interested in having tools where they could detect drug-resistant parasites as they survey the country so that they can use a rational, evidence-based approach to change treatment for malaria. So the Senegal lab has developed this very sensitive method to actually detect drug sensitivity in parasites that have come directly from patients. When we go to Senegal, we work with the clinics and the hospitals. We'll do drug testing and other kinds of analysis of the parasite. And then we'll also send the DNA back to Boston, where we can sequence the genomes. What is exciting is that when we analyze the genomes of humans and the parasite, is we can find out what are the genes and genetic changes that have protected us from malaria and what are the genetic changes that are protecting it from drugs and other therapeutics that we're using. The idea of natural selection is if a trait is beneficial, either in survival or reproductive success, it will be more likely to be passed on to your children and to your children's children, so it'll spread very quickly. Evolution is always trying out different things. Mutations happen randomly. They happen in our genomes every generation. Most of those mutations are not beneficial. But when a new mutation occurs that is under positive natural selection, meaning that it's beneficial, it's more likely to survive in the population. And it was actually one of the founders of population genetics who noticed a lot of red blood cell disorders in regions of the world that were tropical, where malaria was endemic. So he hypothesized that there's no reason why they would happen 
other than having some protective effect. And he pointed that to malaria. And so those red blood cell disorders like sickle cell anemia, like alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia are damaging in some way, but they have become so common because malaria invades the red blood cells. And so if the red blood cells can change their conformation or make the environment for malaria a little worse when the parasite enters, then they can protect in the long term. So studies of natural selection point us to the dramatic forces shaping the human genome. But then it also points us to mechanisms by which we've naturally developed resistance that can help us think about ways of therapeutically developing resistance. On the parasite side as well, we are able to use studies of genetics and natural selection to help us change our intervention strategies. The fact that you see a signature of selection in some of these proteins must mean that there's something going on. Throughout my career, I've never been really interested in vaccine development uh, as, a, as something to pursue myself. But based on the data that we've gotten from the genome, I now think that that's probably the most exciting area for future discovery for this parasite. We've now identified every gene in the parasite that's under natural selection. I actually expected the footprint to be from drug selection. And in fact, the major selective process is by the human immune system. This gives us a whole new vision about how to think about the parasite and vaccine development. It means that there is an effective human immune response to the parasite. It's just that the parasite is constantly changing. And so a vaccine is probably not going to be a magic bullet. You have to think about it much more as you think about influenza vaccine. And so we may actually be facing making multiple malaria vaccines to represent those molecules that are under the greatest selection from the immune system. It is an arms race between humans and pathogens, bacteria, viruses, and parasites like malaria. But the thing is that they have a generation time that's much shorter than ours. They have bigger populations, so they're gonna basically be able to evolve much more rapidly than we do. But we can develop better drugs and vaccines. And so that's where we've given ourselves an advantage.